I'm a host of Radio Hulkamania. The Milford, man. Oh, what's up, little Hulkamania? Oh, this is so cool. I'm, I'm Paul Pass with the Dan Padgett Show. Great to meet you, Mr. Hogan. Pleasure to meet you, brother. It's great to have you here. Now, I, I know I just wrestled for a couple years in high school, but I was wondering, could I try and move out? Oh, brother, I love amateur wrestling. Watch the show me something. Give the Hulkster your best shot. Okay, uh, how about a one-legged takedown? Oh, yeah, oh, easy yeah. there, brother. Or uh, how about a half Nelson? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, the Hulkster. I don't want to anymore, brother. Okay, oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, tough kid there, can you show me a move or two? Oh, sure. Uh, let's do one of the basics, man, Okay. Brother. First, you wrap the guy by the arm bar, oh. then you hold it, ask him wrap, cool. and then you hold that elbow oh, smash. Oh, yeah, that's cool. I don't want cool. to be too hard on you, Well, thanks for coming in. and uh, Sure. Maybe just one more move, Mr. Hogan? Oh. Uh, how about the Hulkster gives you a finishing move? Let's try this one. Okay. Here we go. Oh, Jesus! Oh, what you gonna do? We're the whole idea! Run wild on you! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, no! Hey, hey, little buddy. Oh, come here. Oh, oh, great. Bill. Oh, watch the box score. Start right now. Lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple, C's get degrees. Need a long and appropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Power Tower for box score. Hello and welcome to the Box Score. I'm Brock in Los Angeles, joined by the Danettes in Milford, Connecticut. Guys, the hot topic uh, today was um, rushing the court after K-State uh, came on to the floor after beating uh, KU for maybe the first or second time in the history of that building, maybe ever. Uh, Polly, have you ever rushed the field of play? You know, one time in college at Southern Illinois, I think Southern beat Creighton for the MVC title, and a bunch of us ran out of court. And I remember, because we had front row seats, and I look back and not everybody ran onto the court. I'd say maybe... 100 students, 150, so it wasn't full. So it was kind of sad more than it was cool. Well, it was pretty scary last night, and ESPN's Holly Rowe was there to cover the madness, and she called in and talked about it. How physical was it last night? It was pretty physical. Um, the, the kids were nice, but I did just watch the replay of what happened at the scorer's table with Bill Self, and that was scary. Yep. Um, that actually happened to me last year as I went to the scorer's table thinking, well, if I get in the handshake line, surely I will be safe there. But because the students are storming from the opposite side of the court, that's where all the kind of pressure and everything ends up is right there at the scorer's table. So last year, a, a very nice man kind of gestured to me like, hey, I'll pull you out. And he pulled me out of the scrum. And as I got up on the table, so did some of the other players. I was like, oh, well, here they are. Wow, Holly, I kind of think likes the action. Like she was yeah. like, I expected like more of a report about the danger. She's like, yeah, let's get in there, let's mix it up. You know, I felt like she kind of uh, picked up the enthusiasm of the kids. I was surprised how pro rushing the court she was. And she was a great storyteller. Like yeah. I was really hoping she wouldn't be vague about it. She actually say, hey, this is what happens, and this is what's like. She told story after story with Dan, Dan having to prod her, which is yeah. a great guest. I remember a bunch of years ago, I was doing sidelines with Jack Aroot, and Jack's a very good silent reporter. And he was trying to interview, and he was doing radio, and he's trying to interview, I think it was Larry Coker of the Miami Hurricanes. And there's two guys on his back, two troopers, pulling Jack, and he's not even looking at him. He's asking the questions. And his legs are almost off the ground as they're trying to pull him off Larry Coker. And some, we're at going, he's okay, he's ESPN. Huh. You can hear on the radio broadcast, I'm yelling in the background, he's okay. Yeah. Jack got his two questions and then turned around and just got demolished by these guys. And then they saw his credential, but I mean, you know, the, the cops are doing their job. You're trying to do theirs. It gets really physical, but it's part of the game. Fritz, you had mentioned that you have uh, rushed the field before with your young son in tow. Uh, how young was he uh, yeah. uh, when you uh, had this wanton disregard for his safety? <laughs> <laughs> this was just this past uh, fall. It was the uh, Boston College game in Chestnut Hill in uh, Massachusetts hosting USC. And uh, it, was a, it was a big upset for Boston College to take down uh, one of the top ranked teams in the country. And after things calmed down a little bit, uh, my son was giving me that look. I saw everybody rushing the field and how cool it would be to be part of that. And once uh, you know, I decided that it seemed safe enough, we waited several minutes. You kind of lose that uh, that spont spontaneity and that moment when right everyone's on the, edge. the court. Yeah. But the kid's, uh, kid's 12, and i got to make sure I bring him home safe and safe. 
How much did those tickets cost you? Set you back? Um, <laughs> not too expensive. It was uh, actually very reasonable, uh, very reasonable price. But the because price, the US price, I, the price I would have paid for uh, losing the joint or having him suffer some kind of broken arm or something in the uh, in the craziness. But we had a great time. We got a chance to meet some of the players and pat them on the back. And he's rolling around the field, just taking it all in. And that was a really cool father-son moment as we swung onto the field. So you did not use the USC PR department to get said tickets. I didn't say that. We're talking about storming the court. Was the question? Okay, and you did not tell any of the other Danettes you were headed up there. We I all did heard not. Them. Yeah. So, and by the way, USC hooked you up, and you stormed the court with BC fans. See, that's the only part that bothers me. You get your tickets, <laughs> however you get your tickets. But the fact that you, BC USC that helped you. No, it wasn't USC. It was, oh, it was BC, okay. Then you. Oh, then oh, that's okay clarifying. to storm. We're going to go down that road if that's yes. uh, very significant to the story. Uh, Boston College hosted my son and myself, and uh, so there was definitely no guilt about rooting for the. Uh, for the big upset. And it was cool just being there and then coming home and uh, watching it late night on the news over and over again on sports and everything and know that we were somewhere in that mix on the field at that game a few hours ago was, uh, was pretty How awesome. How are the concession stands up there at BC? Solid? Solid. Good uh, hot dogs were good, sausage. Uh, we had some ice cream. What did you put down, do you think? I had, I'm sure I had a hot dog, a sausage. I'm sure I had a pretzel. Um, there may have been some chicken fingers or chicken nuggets involved. Anyone have a flashback to dessert. Dallas Mavericks during Dallas <laughs> Super Bowl week? Uh, that you that was, it I'd never seen anything like that before. In my entire life. <laughs> I, I still have a picture of that. We were lucky enough to be in, I think it was Mark Cuban's family yeah. suite at a, at a Mavericks game during Super Bowl week. And Fritzy went there, and he brought back a tray. And I think Seton said, oh, you didn't have to bring back stuff for all of us. And Fritzy goes, I didn't. And he had a huge chicken sandwich, a huge, like a foot-long hot dog. A Not foot-long hot yes. dog. Like, that was... Whatever could be fit in that. A to, double that shot of fries. It wasn't a single shot. It was a double shot of fries and a 44-banger drink. And I think your tab was like 36 bucks. And by the way, and like you cannot understand how big the buffet was in this. There was yeah. and we had a free full food. spread yeah, and yeah. a free bar. I was looking for something else. I needed a little little mix. Of you could have gotten a little about it. There's nothing no, little. No, not little. There was plenty of food there, but I wanted to go off the menu a little bit and have a little. Uh, I took a picture of it. I'm going to have to search back for it. I, of course, I've saved it, but uh, it's fascinating. <laughs> well, from noshing. The, uh, the re -intro, that cardboard box was Yeah, full. so from noshing back to moshing. Uh, see, what's the most intense mosh pit you've ever been in? Oh boy, uh, there have been a few of them. The shoe loss. Um, hate breed is always pretty gnarly. Uh, Deftones had a way. They they used to do this thing back in the day where they would split the crowd. Like bands do this, and I remember the Deftones doing it. And uh, Deftones they split the crowd and they would do, say like it was like a Braveheart kind of thing, and they would have both sides just run at each <laughs> other at a certain point in the song. That was crazy. Uh, I remember Hate Breed saying like. Jamie Josta is the lead singer, saying like, "You see this mother effer next to you? I want you to take him down, or whatever." And I was like, "Oh my god! Like, look at all these huge guys here! I'm like, I'm in the middle. I have to get out of here." Uh, yeah, there've been some some gnarly ones for sure. I was in a mosh pit. It was in Lawrence, Kansas. It was at the Bottleneck. The band was Kill Whitey. I was swept away. Uh, not one of my favorite bands, though. I was just uh, taken away. Uh, you guys talked about your favorite band today, and here are your top fives. So mine were uh, Nirvana, Hot Water Music, Jawbreaker, Jets to Brazil, and then you could plug in a thousand other bands. At five. All right. Here's uh, Fritzy, top five bands of all time. Hall & Oates, Run DMC, Chicago, Huey Lewis in the News, and uh, the Bangles and Survivor tied for fifth. I'm going to guess this is McLovin. And I thought he might go a little artsy here to try to outclass Seton. Velvet Underground, Rolling Good. Stones, Pavement, The Band, and then he's got The Who, Kinks, and Pink Floyd tie. Pauly Beatles, Foo Fighters, Motley Crue, Depeche Mode, Rush, and then if I included solo artists, you'd have Frank Sinatra in there. Yeah, that's, uh, that was good. If, if Fritzy's list was trying to be funny, it'd be the funniest list of all time. But it was survival. Survivor. <laughs> Survivor. I mean, if yeah. you would have said, like, as a comedy, if we were a comedy show and you put that list out, you'd have hit a home run. So you're like the Beatles, the Bengals. I don't Bangles, know. Yeah. Bangles, I'm, I'm sticking that by Billy Joel. You know what, though? She is that hot. It. Susanna Hotz uh, is that hot. If you, to put the if you really on that closely list. watch, and if you I have, yeah. with and without pants on, walk like an Egyptian, and she's doing that thing with her eyes and looking at the other band members. There's not a hotter moment. I love it. Except <laughs> for Tony Katan, maybe yeah. laying on the. Fritzy was laying out the songs that, Does that over? Does that <laughs> yes, overcompensate for the music? Actual music right. substance. The, the fact that Tony Katan. You're doing a little eternal flame. flame What's in the uh, Survivor song? Not, that's a Rocky Four. Survivor. There's Eye. Yeah, they did Eye of the Tiger. They did the Rocky Four song with the. You love soundtracks. But he's got the log on. 
Yeah, back. Yeah, and um, High on You, which is this huge. High on You is a mm -hmm. big tune. The search tune. is yeah. over. Come wow. on. Welcome you. No Asia. That's it. After Asia that. didn't make the cut. Toto? Yeah, go Toto? 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 Toto was good, Mr. Roboto. And, All right. But I'm going to stick by that. Yeah, I was not trying to be funny. Let me tell you about the girl I met last night. Broccoli, let me ask you. We don't really know your musical taste. If you had to take somebody's list and say, I've got to take a box set of somebody's list to a desert island, whose list would you take? Oh, my goodness. Uh, Susanna Hoffs and the Bangles. I mean, how many times? Well, Eternal Flame. You don't get her. You just get her music. Ooh. Uh, I, Rush is solid. I don't know many of Seton's. Uh, I'm going to just jump right in the middle with DP and go with McLovin's. I think that's, I, I mean, I haven't heard much of that stuff, so I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming it's pretty good. All right, uh, let's. Uh, <laughs> you know what my favorite band is? It's Mike Florio and the Box Scorios. It's our house band. Uh, we'll be back and we'll talk Daytona 500. The Box Score is powered by the Ram 1500 Eco Diesel. Every truck can tow a boat, every truck can climb a hill, every truck can haul a trailer. But not everybody has the most fuel efficient half ton truck on the road. Get more facts at ramtrucks.com. Guts, glory, Ram. What's your least favorite song of all time where you'll, if you're, if you're driving and it's snowing and you've got to have both hands on the wheel, bad weather, you'd still reach over and turn it? Like a lot of people have Don't Worry, Be Happy for that song. Mine might be Come On Eileen. Come On Eileen? Who doesn't like See, Come On Eileen? I don't, it's the worst song ever made. I don't like that. But I wouldn't, I would, I would. if your choice was silence or that. I would consider crashing the car. <laughs> you'd then listen to that. I don't, but once there was this kid who crashed test dummies. I think. You know that song, you know, as much as I love David Bowie, you know that song Diamond Dog? Or, uh, How's it go? Oh, yeah, it's with Diamond Dog. Uh, 1984, is it 1984? No. Look that song up real quick. Bowie, Diamond Dog. I love Bowie. I think. I'm trying to think, yeah, what is the song? You'll just turn the radio off. That's like, a great no, song. No way. I like Rebel Rebel. Another great song. I could listen to Bowie's greatest hits over and over. You like what? That was uh, Kieran's first record. One minute to get settled. David Bowie. He's like, Daddy, listen, it's Major Tom. Love it. I'm like, dude, you're Ground awesome. to Major Tom. Mm -hmm. yeah, Daddy, can... you listen to Major Tom today. I really hate that song. Welcome back to the box score. Guys, Joey Logano called in just a few days after winning the Daytona 500 at the tender age of 24. Seton, let's uh, compare apples to oranges, shall we? Uh, what was your life like at 24? 24. You were r r moving fast and reckless, similar to Joey Logano. I was, yeah, yeah, fast and reckless. I was probably detoxing somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I just moved to Connecticut, actually. I'd been in Connecticut for a little while, so I was doing like morning zoo radio in Hartford um, and trying to grow up a little bit. Paula, how about this? What's the fastest yeah. you've ever been in a car not on a racetrack? <clears throat> Myself driving, I would say maybe 120 driving. Uh, I have a friend named Danny Konjevic. He used to own a Porsche 944, and we were going from L.A. to Arizona, and we were in a stretch of desert, and it was real flat. We got to 139, mm. and the whole car was shaking. Yeah. I thought parts were going to fly off it, and I literally said to him, I go, I think we're good. And he goes, 140? I'm like, I think we're good. And I wasn't scared until we got to about 130 miles an hour yeah. because it, it was a road with, like, if you went around the corner, there could be some guy pulling out. It was pretty barren desert, but 139 was mm. the fastest off a of track. Probably shaking some uh, hardware loose of that car. Uh, DP uh, talked to Logano about some hardware that he earned for his big day. Okay, what's the, what's the Daytona 500 ring look like? Badass. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's big, that's for sure. It's uh, it's definitely um, uh, it's got some diamonds in it. It's got the the racetrack. Uh, it's got a big 500 right in the center. It's the Daytona 500 champions. So that part's pretty neat. I love that. What a great line. I mean, badass. It's one of my all-time favorite phrases. Badass and kickass are my two two of my favorite phrases because things are either badass or they're not badass, and that's kind of summarizes everything in life. Absolutely. Hey, Legato talked about losing his wedding ring on his honeymoon. Fritzy, this sounds like something that might fall in your your uh, your, your, your skill set. Yeah, I, I did actually have an experience. Uh, this was, I think, uh, about a year ago. I was playing with uh, with my son in the backyard. Ooh, I'm glad he's your son. 
and we were having a uh, oh. we were having a football catch, and all of a sudden I, something didn't feel right on my finger, and I noticed that my uh, my wedding ring fell off, and I'm digging through the grass and the dirt, and I and I don't want to want my wife to find out, and my daughter was in uh, was in the house, and uh, me and Jordan are looking all over. Thankfully, um, you know, somewhere within <laughs> about 20 to 30 minutes later, we we I don't know how we miraculously found it. Uh, thankfully, the grass was uh, was cut way ahead of time, and there wasn't that much. Who, who to did go you through. cut the grass? Uh, someone that I hired to cut mm -hmm. the grass. And um, and then I, I saw it there, and um, and I I realized from now on I will not ever have any kind of sporting event or have a catch or play sports at all with the ring on. I just took it off, whether it feels loose or tight. I put it next to my keys in the house. So who can take theirs off the fastest? Ready? One, two, three, go. Mine's off. Ah! Off. Not bad. Mine's definitely not flying off. At all. Yeah, but, no, that, but like, that was frightening because I'm very, I'm very sentimental, and even though you can, you know, get a duplicate or whatever, you know, the actual one that you had on your wedding day, you know, that mm. that, that can't be replaced. And that would have upset yeah. me a well, lot. Can if you just go to the store. Yeah, but it just would have. But that, you know, just something, the, the symbolism of it, that being the exact one that was put on my finger the day of our wedding would, you know, you can't get that back. I'm on my, I think I'm on my third. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm definitely on my second. Lost mine uh, three months after we were married backyard of the house uh, apartment I used to live in Stanford blew off my hand and uh, out into the woods and I hired a guy with a metal detector searched for three hours oh. and probably almost cost me as much as the ring itself and uh, he didn't find it yeah I, I only take it off when I'm going out in the city at night with my friends just because that's a situation where you can if you go to a bar or something you can lose it so I leave it at home and <laughs> <you're> like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say that? <laughs> you know. I don't know about that. They just don't want to lose it. <laughs> Very questionable. Fritzy, do you have an inscription on the inside of your ring? Uh, I don't. I just, uh, the, uh, just uh, again, the, the fear that came across me. Not that my wife would, she'd be disappointed, but she wouldn't be like, you know, so as traumatic, you know, as, as far as I would be. But um, it's just something that, uh, you know, the second I realized it wasn't on my finger, I went into total panic mode, as I'm wont to do. And, uh, the, and then You're left handed, policy. and you have your ring on your left hand. That's is interesting. That, is that really not? Oh, aren't is that you not supposed that? to have I, don't know. I thought you were supposed to have it on your non dominant hand. I'm not hand. sure what the uh, rules are. I thought it was supposed to be on the left hand. Left. God, I've never heard that. Like a watch. If you're if you're right handed, you have your watch. I've always I've always had it on here. Because that's your that's your money hand. But let me check to make sure there's no my money hand. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. Yeah, no no inscription. Does that thing chafe? If you know what I mean. Back to you in the studio. Okay, it says 10k. If you're wondering, don't go away. It's either on pancakes or it's on ice. Either way, it's next. Welcome back to the box score. Guys, football season has come, has come and gone. So has awards season. Guess what that means? It's time to get you ready for hockey season. Just in time for the playoff push. Uh, now, this is the third installment we have played uh, in uh, these games to get you aware of who these hockey players are. We played Ikea, or is it a Swedish hockey player? We've done Russian vodka or Russian hockey player. This is the granddaddy of them all. This is Canadian maple syrup or American NHL hockey player. This is Roe versus Roe. You tell me whether they're on the ice or whether Pauly dipped his bacon uh, in, a, in a bottle of this, uh, this past weekend. Starting with the front mm. row. The name is Crinklaw. Crinklaw, maple syrup or NHL? How do you spell the last three letters of that word? L-A-W. L-A-W. Is it? Yeah. C-R-I-N-K-L-A-W. I'm gonna say that's I'm gonna go mapes on that. I think that's a maple syrup. I agree with you, Seaton. You gentlemen are correct. It is Crink, uh, Crinklaw Maple's products of, out of Ontario. Of course it is. <laughs> uh, back oh, row. Work. <laughs> uh, how about Dumfries? Dumfries, maple syrup or NHL? Rissy's gonna guess NHL because it was syrup before. Dumb from. Well, that's usually the way this works. Yeah. yeah. Almost exclusively. I'm not familiar with, but this it could very well be a hockey player. I'm not familiar with the name Dumfries as a hockey player. He's an enforcer, player. kind of an enforcer. It's going yeah. to be a <laughs> Charles Dumfries. So you think they're going to go 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one yes. like that? They're not going to do two maple the syrups in a row? You have to outthink the producers. They yeah, only have so uh, much material. All right, there. so for the right, we're going we're gonna to say hockey player only because we think uh, the, uh, the L.A. crew is too lazy to do uh, two <laughs> maple syrups. Means. Well, they weren't too la lazy to do maple syrup. It is Dumfries Maples 
out of New Brunswick. Oh, mm. snap. Uh, <laughs> front oh, row. Snap. How, how, how about a family affair? Don't even read it. It's got to be a hockey player. It's the Felino family. <laughs> Felino family. Maple syrup or NHL? Well, the Felino family are world famous hockey players, obviously, but they also And they do the tumbles and the acrobatics. Yeah. Can they do bowl? The, uh, oh, who is that? The uh, flying. Will Enders? <laughs> Will Enders, yeah. yeah. Sounds like a lawsuit. Yeah. Those guys yeah, lost they're their a circus up. family. The Felinos. Do you think maybe they're Blue trying Felignos. to be snarky this time and went all syrup? No Ooh. way. This has got to be a hockey player. If this isn't a hockey player, I'll. I don't even if know. this yeah. is not a hockey player, then we're going syrup, too, because it's all syrup. <laughs> all syrup all the time. All right. We're going hockey. Uh, you gentlemen are absolutely correct. Uh, Nick Felino leads the Blue Jackets in point. His brother, uh, Marcus, plays for the Nicholas Buffalo Felino. Sabres. Marcus. Both born in Buffalo. Marcus. Overrated. Back row. Right How here. about another famous is... hockey or maple oh, family? Okay. It's the Fulton family. Maple syrup or NHL? Oh. Marcus, Fulton so, so maple so far, there's been syrup. two maple syrups and a hockey. Yeah, I mean, two, two. are they really gonna go two one one? Mm. I don't think they're up in the Labrador one. region. The Fulton maple syrup <laughs> gets full with Fulton. That's right. their catchphrase. I, I still don't know. They went two syrups. Do you know any hockey players hockey named Fulton though? When in I can't Labrador, name you, like Tommy Fulton, plays Ted, Ted Fulton, in general. Tommy, Tommy, uh, Ted Fulton, brothers. fullback on the Vikings. Do you, really, you see, think it sounds more like syrup than a hockey player? Fulton doesn't sound like that awkward a name. Let's go with syrup. All right, we're gonna go syrup. The you Fulton gentlemen syrup. are absolutely correct. Fulton's maple syrup has been in Ontario for 160 <laughs> years and five generations. It's not breakfast without Fulton. It yeah. never is. It's Front row. The, campaign. the name is maroon. Maple syrup or NHL. What a maroon. What a gullible. What a maroon. Mm. The coon maroon. What a Doug maroon. Mm. Maroon maple syrup. That's a very boring name. I mean, Maroon, if he's a goon, he'd be Maroon the goon. Right. Yeah, it's so. a very uninspired syrup name. It is Maroon, although it's a very uninspired hockey player. Name. But he doesn't have a choice. Like, does the okay, hold on. So it went five. it went syrup. 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 Hockey, hockey player. Syrup. syrup. Definitely. Hockey. This has got to be a hockey player. Definitely. There's no way DJ's this smart. Have no. they True. Have they figured out the code? Uh, yes, it is a hockey player. Patrick Maroon, born in <laughs> Missouri. <laughs> Plays for the Maroon. Anaheim it's Ducks. It's actually Moran. You're, you're saying it wrong. It's Moran. It's Maloon. 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 And finally, Ooh, back row. How about Moss? <laughs> Moss. Maple syrup or NHL? First of all, I, I want to say that it's incredible that this segment is still going on. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Kane would have been a good one because Kane, yeah. sugar, syrup. Yeah, but Patrick. <laughs> Uh, Moss. Well, we've been doing this since like 8 in the morning. I feel like this is <laughs> like 11th hour of guessing. Uh, I'm thinking syrup here, Moss? You don't care anymore. Well, that, that doesn't seem very attractive for a, a delight. Oh, Moss. Moss, Moss maple syrup? Mm. Moss, Moss goes on the north side of the Logic tree. says it's a hockey player, so I say why, why, why does Logic say it's a hockey player? Moss syrup? <laughs> so well, give me what you think the first name of this guy is, just for giggles. Vladimir Moss. All right, Vladimir Moss for the Canucks. Well, there was a D in it. It's David right Moss. Uh, he was born in Michigan, plays for the Arizona <laughs> Coyotes. <laughs> Technically, he does. And the winning row is Moss. the front row. They figured it all out. Woo! Not by much. Right, really coming up, thing. each one of these kids has more talent than all of us combined. And none of them are maple syrup. Ah, uh, this is the box score, and we are taking a break and remind you that the Ram Heavy Duty, with its best-in-class towing, torque, and horsepower, doesn't need one. Guts, glory, Ram. Look at the girl in the front. Yeah, she is rocking. Serious. Now, I like when they go right to here. These oh, guys yeah, are just waiting. They got a little waiting. dance going. He's waiting. <laughs> They're definitely first chair. We're closing up shop here on the box score. I, I'm still in awe of those kids playing cashmere. That, that makes any school concert uh, you know, doable. Polly, uh, is this the coolest uh, Zeppelin cover song ever? It's pretty good. I mean, these kids are on their way to being driving an IROC, wearing a guest jeans jacket, yeah. and having their hair parted down the middle pretty soon. <laughs> Maybe a chain wallet and a pack of Marlboro Reds. <laughs> Fritzy, how much more lame is this going to make your kids' uh, school concert seem? 
Uh, extremely lame. I mean, I, I, could, I probably shouldn't. They watch the show, but uh, you know, it's hard to sit through it to, to begin with when they're practicing and then going to these recitals and shows and concerts. Seeing something cool like that with these fourth graders, um, they're going to have to step up their game to keep me from uh, taking a nap during the next uh, auditorium visit that I'm going to need to make. McLovin, do you remember uh, the song list from your kids' last concert? My kids? <sighs> Actually, the kids had a talent show at this little thing the other day, and they, every single kid requested the same song. See if you let guys. Let it go. No, let, let it go. Let it go. No, let it go. Was off the table. It wasn't. It was happy. Everyone sang happy. Everyone oh, wanted to dance to happy. That's a good one. Except Emma Perloff, who wanted classical music, but she's two. <laughs> I don't know. What. All right, see, remembering that the good comes with the bad. Would you rather have your son be a pro skateboarder or a uh, a punk guitarist? <clears throat> Oh. And he's gonna be successful at both? Like, whatever, whichever one he takes? Yeah. Well, I mean, hmm. why can't he do both? You gotta pick one. He has to be one. Um, I'd rather him be a pro skateboarder than a uh, punk guitarist. Would though. you rather have him be... Nobody makes any money playing punk rock. Would you rather have him be a pro skateboarder, punk guitarist, or a successful lawyer? Oh, no, I'd rather him be a pro skateboarder yeah. than a lawyer. lawyer. F lawyers. <laughs> All right, to so the father of a future lawyer punk rock skateboarder, uh, Fritzy, who's on tomorrow? Uh, Brent Musburger will join us tomorrow. They're confirmed. Uh, world renowned, legendary nice. broadcaster moments ago. Love Brent. Uh, we were also going to hear from the uh, athletic director at Kansas State, John Curry, to John uh, explain Curry. what happened uh, with the Kansas Kansas State, the fallout, and his uh, apology, and what they can do to make things safer. And Rich Eisen of the NFL Network will uh, join us as well, all on the uh, Wednesday edition. Also works for Direct TV. Direct TV hosts the Rich Eisen show. Yeah. That, uh, Any relation with, follows uh, ours. with John Curry and Curry, the tennis player? It's possible. I have to look into that. He is husband to uh, Susie Schuster and Curry, Eisen, father Tim Curry, Tim Curry, and Cooper. Tim Curry from, uh, from, Tim, Tim, from, uh, Curry. Yeah. Tim Curry from uh, Tim, what, the, what was that, that uh, village show? From Tim Curry? The Rocky yeah, Horror Picture Show. Thanks for watching the box score. Yes. We are back tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern right here on Audience Channel 239. The podcast is available on iTunes or at podcastone.com. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple, C's get degrees. Need a long, inappropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Hey, thanks for watching the box score. Holy cow!